Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports for another Springbok squad update. Dropping like flies at the moment because I think this is the fourth uh, or third or fourth official squad update we have had since the original box squad was named. And uh, that's why it's funny when you look at the original sort of reaction to the Springbok squad and uh, the lack of other options and depth in very commas being tested. And yet a week later, we've got, you know, four players in the squad that weren't supposed to be in the original squad uh, a potential debut in waiting for example some youngsters and uh, definitely building depth in key positions and the latest one to be called into the squad is sharks outside back well utility back jordan hendrickson who has officially replaced france mar herber in the Springbok squad. Stormers, lots and lots of injury issues, and that continues. For example, you look at Stephen Kitsoff, still waiting to see a very long-term injury. They have to wait to see exactly see how his uh, next sort of injury is, is coping before they sort of make a decision on any sort of return time um, and the likes. David Willem Savage pulled out of the squad, and now we have lost France Mal Herber, who has officially been uh, called in, uh, well, ruled out, and uh, Jordan Hendricks uh, has been called in. Uh, it's amazing how much you can learn about the Rusty Erasmus sort of selection process, process and sort of the squad that we have in the fact that over the last few days, for example, we've lost the fullback, replaced him with a loose four, we've just lost a tight end prop and replaced him with a fly half fullback, utility back type of player. And I think it just shows you that it's a very settled squad and that there's enough depth throughout sort of the different squad that a lot of this is about giving players opportunity. So, for example, it's not necessarily a list of, right, if this person's out, this person comes in. It's kind of a list of these are the people we want to come on tour that didn't quite make it. And as long as we can cope with what we've got, even if we lose a player, we're going to bring in the next person who is, um, for example, like, like Cameron Honeycomb, now Jordan Hendrickson. Because they basically said they've got enough props to cope. And because it's, it's you know, for example, a, a time zone thing, that they can fly over a prop if they need be uh, later on in the tour. So if you look at uh, what uh, uh, Rashi Mas had to say, he said the following. He said, uh, Jordan has been playing very well for the Hollywood Bet Sharks in the Vodacom URC, and he's a cap spring rock, so he's familiar with our structures. This will serve as a great opportunity for him to get further exposure at international level and in the spring rock setup itself. We also have good depth among the forwards, so we opted to call up Jordan to add further depth among the backs. Obviously, we did lose David Willemser a few days ago. He said he is he's a talented player and he's been growing in the role at his union, as we saw with his late penalty goal to earn the Sharks the Curry Cup earlier this season. And through his recent performance in the Vodacom URC, and so we are excited to see what he can add to the squad. He said, with the UK and South Africa being in similar time zones, it will be simple to call up another prop should the need arise during the tour. So again, that's what I'm saying. It's more about giving Jordan Henderson the opportunity to come overseas and understand what a tour is like, uh, a, a three-week tour is like uh, with the box. Spend a week in Jersey, for example, training. It's it's about the four weeks he's going to get with the spring box, not necessarily, for example, about the playing time. And, and that's such an interesting thing, you know, because if it was, they were worried about the games uh, themselves and not having depth, they'll be flying in a tight head prop. And this is not even a guarantee, for example, that Jordan Henderson is going to see any action because technically there's been no change to... You know the backline, uh, you know players from a, from an absence point of view since he's been added, he's just in the extra backline player. So he's not necessarily going to play, not necessarily going to get the game time. But it shows you how important they consider traveling with the squad, being in the setup, for example, and getting that exposure. And it's something that uh, you know, for example, Ireland are doing something similar where they've got kind of like training players. I can't remember what the exact uh, uh, call it's like an apprenticeship almost type thing. I think they actually almost called apprentice players. Um, like a Sam Renegos, for example, who has gone on a couple of tours and he's not actually officially in the squad. He's just literally there as a development sort of player to understand what it's like to tour and stuff like that. So it's not completely unique to the box, but it's a really good sign of what the box are trying to do. It's about the exposure to the setup. It's about building depth, for example, knowing what to do on match day, knowing what's expected to see in other players train. For the box to get to know them, Buck managed to get to know him. You know, for example, Tony Brown, he gets to work with Jordan Henderson. I think he really highly rates him. That's why you got that start at uh, at Twickenham against Wales. So I think he is a player that is um, highly rated by the Swedish management. Now they get to get four weeks of working with him and giving him feedback to take back to the Sharks, for example. And that kind of experience is you can't you can't bottle it. You can't just give it in a presentation. You've got to be there. It has to be a lived experience. Uh, so I think it's at the end of the day, you know, none of us are really going to complain about sort of the, the change we see in these squads because we trust the process. We trust the coaches. So it's a bit of an interesting one. And hopefully this will be the final sort of uh, squad 
uh, uh, change. Well, obviously, these are also the catch up from, from players uh, that are injured over the weekend. So we're kind of sitting on Tuesday now. Hopefully, this will be the end of any sort of injury list. Um, but yes, Jordan Henderson in, Franz Moherba out. I don't think it's the worst thing for Franz Moherba to get a bit of uh, a bit of a rest. It means we will probably now see Volko Lowe get some minutes. So still the line is there as well. Opportunity for other players to put their hands up. So I think it's all sort of falling into place, actually, quite organically, which is good to see. But uh, let me know what you think. Should it have been Jordan Hendricks, sir? Should have been somebody else? If he does play for the box, where would you like to see him play in terms of positions? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.